It is my great uh, fortune to be able to study the human mind. How do we think? How do we feel? When it goes well, we are pleased. But I am more interested in the moments in which our minds make mistakes. Okay? When they make errors and we study what is going on, we have a chance to understand ourselves. And once we understand ourselves, to improve ourselves. To improve ourselves so that we can be the people that we want to be, rather than the error-prone people that we tend to be. Okay? So we're going to start, and today we're going to do experiments. So you will have to answer, and I will have to ask you questions. Okay? So let's start with that. And the first thing that you're going to see is a very simple picture. Okay? These are two tables drawn by a very famous psychologist by the name of Roger Shepard. And I want you to look at these two tables, and I want you to answer a simple question. Do the two table surfaces look the same to you, or do they look slightly different to you? In other words, if I were to take the table on the left, and turn it around, and put it on the table on the right, would the surfaces fit perfectly, or would they be different? What do you think? Different? Different, okay. Now, Leonardo da Vinci, when he looked at this kind of picture, he also saw them to be different. But he was so much smarter than all of us that he knew that they were the same. Okay? So I'm going to show you what I mean by exactly that. And let us just do this. And if we can have the lights in the house down, please, we can see and I'll just show it to you. Actually, I'm just going to go up here and do it from here. So, for the young people in this room, this is called an overhead projector. <laughs> okay? um, it does very cool things like this, which your computer cannot do. Okay. So, let us start with these two tables. I dimmed the light because I wanted you to feel how Leonardo would have felt. He had no electricity. So we're going to see how he would have seen this image. So we have the table on the left, the table on the right. If I'm correct, then you should be very surprised when you see this. Yeah, OK. I, I win many bets when I take this, OK? I'm going to do this. Sometimes people are skeptical. So I will do it again. And sometimes people are so silly that they say, please do it the other way. So I will now do it the other way. And they are indeed exactly the same. All right? So now the magic show ends. And now we get to talk about the science. So we can have the lights on. And and I will, oops, turn this off. I think I did. Okay. And now we talk about what this all means. We don't have the time today to talk about all the reasons why your brain made this mistake. All I can tell you today is that it made this mistake because your brain learned to get messages from your eye in a very old world thousands and thousands of years ago, millions of years ago. And in that world, the natural world was always three-dimensional. So your brain learned to make some computations that it is making even today, even though you know that this is not a 3D image. This is a two-dimensional image, and your brain can't cope with that new world. So what does this mean for us? because we're not just interested in tables, we're interested in how human beings make sense of each other. And so I tell you here the case study of symphony orchestras. In the late 1970s, American symphony orchestras went through an interesting change. They decided that maybe they were biased in the way in which they were hearing music. So they did an experiment, and the experiment is very simple. When they were selecting musicians for their orchestra, the musician would play here on a stage in some beautiful auditorium like this. You are the selectors. 
but between you and me, there is a curtain. You cannot see me and I cannot see you. I play and you, the judges, must listen with your ears and you must make a decision about the sound of the music. Okay? Now, in the late 1970s, American symphony orchestras were almost entirely all male, all men, except for the harp player who would sit in the corner and play a little instrument by herself. The Vienna Philharmonic, I think, is still like that. But once the curtain... Oh, so when you ask people, why? Why is it the case that there are so few women in symphony orchestras? They would say, there are no women musicians who are good enough for our orchestra. Once the curtain dropped, the case study shows that the number of women who were selected doubled. They went up by 50%. Okay? So this is something quite interesting that when you cannot see the person, more women are being selected. And often people write about this and say, isn't it great that now more women are being selected? And by the way, American symphony orchestras still, to this day, do all their auditioning blindly. Okay? I argue it's not just that more women come into symphony orchestras. You might say, who cares who the players are? But what I would argue is that when you drop the curtain, okay, you are selecting better musicians because your eyes are no longer biased by the shape and form of the person you are viewing. Okay? And this is extremely important to know because you can tell yourself, I do not wish to be biased. I will make the accurate decision based on just the sound. And what these data are telling us is that well-intentioned people, okay, with, with, with every reason to select the best musicians, were not selecting the best musicians. Okay? And that, I think, is an important enough lesson, and it goes back to the tables. The two table surfaces are the same. The two players, male and female, may be the same. But our eyes and our ears will not see them to be the same. And so, we must outsmart our minds. We must do tricks around our minds to make sure that we select objectively and that we select the best. Okay? So, with that, let me tell you another kind of a bias that you might find interesting, and it comes from the human face. Okay? Human faces, when you look at one, you don't just look at the face. In 200 milliseconds, your brain begins to think about the character of the person. Is this somebody I should trust? Is this somebody I should not trust? Is this one smart? Is this one a little bit not so smart? Our brain is making these decisions based on a person's face. And of course, as you know, the problem is that the face is not an accurate indicator of what is inside the person. I mean, I just ask you uh, for a second to maybe look at the face of Pavarotti. If you did not know that he was Pavarotti, would you let him into your home at night? I don't think so. I think most of us, if we look at people's faces, we make wrong judgments about them based on their face. So I will show you a lovely little experiment done by Alex Todorov. And he studies the human face. And what I'm going to show you in eight seconds is that the face will change. The eyes will move out, and the mouth will remain the same. And when that happens, your brain will begin to see that this man will suddenly look smarter and smarter and smarter. Okay? And then when the eyes come inward and the mouth bends a little bit, you will feel that this person is becoming dumber and dumber and dumber in front of your very eyes. And I want you to have this experience. If you're honest with yourselves, I think you will feel this. And I think it's important for us to know. So let's take a look. I'll tell you what's going on. The eyes are moving out. And now look, doesn't this person look like a robot, a very smart person? And now take a look at what happens when the eyes come closer. A little dumb, pretty damn dumb by now. Okay? Now this is absolutely crazy. This should not be happening. But Alex has shown in his research that this affects how we make decisions about who to vote for. That we look at faces, and from that, we make our decisions about voting. Okay? 
and maybe in Italy and in the United States, we should think really hard about this, right? Okay. I'm going to give you a final little test, and you will have to participate and say some words loudly. To do this test, you will see some words, and the words will be very simple words. They will be names of men and names of women. And you should see very quickly that on the left are all the names of men, on the right are all the names that are familiar names of men and women. You will also see name, words that capture the category of career, things that go on in the workplace. So words like leader, manager, salario. And then on the right side are words that come from the world of our home. Okay? Uh, and these casa-related words like bambini and cucina are all of these words that we associate with the home. So you need to remember these kinds of words. And now, in a little bit, we will do the test. And the test is very simple. You will see words appear on the screen. And based on the instruction, you simply have to say left or right. And to make this super easy, I have learned the Italian words for left and right. So you will say today, if the word goes to the left, you will simply say sinistra. And if it goes to the right, you will simply say destra. Okay? Everybody got it? But there are some rules for this test. You must go very fast. So taking one second to answer is too slow. You have to go faster than one second, okay? If you go fast, you will make some mistakes. That's okay. When you make a mistake, pick up the next item and go again quickly as you can. And definitely do this loudly. Say sinistra and destra loudly, okay? As if you're an opera singer in this, in this room, okay? All right, so now we're going to uh, open up the test and I will tell you how it will work. It is very simple, it is very easy, and you will have fun doing this. Okay, so a word will appear in the middle of the screen. If it is a man's name, you will say sinistra. If it is a woman's name, like Anna, you will say destra. And you will do this fast, and you will do this loud, and the computer will measure how fast you are going. Okay, ready? Go. Fantastic. 700 is a very good score, and you got close to 700. So do not go slower than 700. You can speed up, and the number can be in the 600s, but not 800. Okay, ready? Now, you see words that come from career or home. If the word is a word that comes from this group, carriera, you will say sinistra. And if the word is from casa, you will say destra. Ready? Go fast, nice and loud, go. Fantastic. And now, and now, <laughs> wait a moment, now, if the name is a man's name or if it is a career word, you will say sinistra. If it is a woman's name or if it is a house word, you will say destra. Okay, ready? Everybody has it in mind? Man and career gets a left, female and home gets a right. Ready? Go fast and loud. Excellent. Imagine this. Yes, you should clap for this one. And now, you have done this so well that we do not do this one, we skip, and now we switch. Yeah, okay. This one is not the problem. Okay, so let's try this. Now, if it is a female name, you will say sinistra. If it is a man's name, you, you will say destra. Ready? This is easy. Fast, loud, go.
Excellent. Incredible. Very good. And now, for this round, if you see a female name or career, you must say Sinistra. If you see a man's name or a house word, you should say Destra. Ready? Let me see how badly you do on this one. Okay. Ready? Go. Okay. You did very well, but not as fast as you went before. Okay. So the important thing about this test is to know that the culture leaves its thumbprint on your brain. I have had a career my whole life, okay? And I cannot do this fast, equally fast. For some reason, in my mind, male and career go quickly together and female and home go quickly together. So I want you to remember that the vast majority of people in the world show this bias. Even feminists show this bias, right? Um, and men and women actually perform very much the same on this test. So this is not a bias that only men show. It is both men and women, and they show it equally. Our point is that the thumbprint of the culture left on your brain leads you to make certain kinds of decisions in the world. That when you see somebody, that the association that they are meant for the life of work or meant for a life at home enters into our decisions, but it does it very subtly and it does it unconsciously. And that's something that we ought to know because if we know it, maybe we can correct it, right? So, once we know this, let me take us back and let us come to the end of this little uh, talk today. And I want to end with the words of a Sufi poet from the 13th century, whose name is Rumi. And one of the things that Rumi said about human beings is this. Every one of us is a jackass. And in case it's not clear, I'm going to show you what it means, right? Every one of us is an Asino. But, he said, with the wings of angels tacked onto us. And I believe, yes, we will make mistakes. We will be jackasses. But what is it that gives us these wings of angels? And to a modern day scientist like myself, the wings of angels that we have come from our conscious awareness. Conscious awareness gets us into trouble. But with conscious awareness, we can outsmart our minds. First, we have to know that there is a problem. And then, I think we're good enough that we're going to fix it in some way. You can go to a website and take many tests of this kind. They're at Harvard University, implicit.harvard.edu. You can take tests to measure how much racial bias you have, how much gender bias, how much sexuality bias you have, age bias, different countries. There is a website for Italy alone. And once you know what your bias is, I hope that you will go to a new place that we have just created, a way through podcasts and through videos for you to learn how to outsmart your mind. And that you can find very easily these days by going to outsmartinghumanminds.org. And that is a project to which I am greatly uh, devoted. So I want to say thank you very much for being such a great audience. Thanks.